um, you're welcome to this part on uh, environmental management of the tree uh, we'll be looking at uh, agriculture and the environment so let's move so uh, for the first lesson which is this so what we'll be looking at is soil composition we're looking at soil composition and uh, so on the soil composition we should be able to describe and explain the composition of the soil and uh, composition of the soil we'll look at um, the mineral particles the organic content uh, microorganisms and uh, which are microorganisms and their dead remains air and water then we'll also look at particle size of sand silt and clay then we'll now move on to look at soil for plant growth where we look, should be able to describe soil as a medium for plant growth and describe the difference between sandy and clay soil so uh, soil as a medium for plant growth we'll look at mineral ions and uh, organic content ph air content water content drainage and ease of cultivation so that wasting so much time what is soil now on uh, the upper layer of the earth in which plants grow a black or a dark brown material typically consisting of a mixture of organic remains clay and rock particles that's what a soil is all about now soil is very important so importance of soil is one uh, soil serve as a medium for plant growth of all kinds of plants though soil modifies the atmosphere by emitting and absorbing gases soil provide habitat for animals that live in the soil so there are certain animals that live in the soil so it's more like a habitat for them soil absorb hold release alter and purify most of the water in terrestrial system soil serve as engineering media for construction and soil act as a living filter to clean water now what is the composition of soil soil is composed of mineral particles organic content air and water so uh, mineral particles combination of rocks fragments and other inorganic substances um, they are formed due to physical chemical and biological weathering of rocks and you know already that rocks are aggregate of minerals so the breaking down of rocks into smaller particles will form soil so these minerals uh, that are found in rock also form the mineral particles in in soil now organic content which is a mixture of living plants animals microorganisms and their dead remains from the organic content of soil now air held within the pore spaces between the mineral particles and organic content air enters the soil by diffusion then water is held within the pore spaces also so air and water are held within the pore spaces uh, water is then available for plant growth and water enter the soil when there is precipitation in the form of it can be rain snow or when the soil is irrigated when you add uh, shower water to it now in terms of soil composition of soil uh, this diagram here explain the volume composition now out of 100 percent of us of soil 45 percent is made up of mineral matter and 25 percent is made up of water and 25 percent is made up of air and organic uh, content makes up five percent of the soil so five percent is organic content 45 percent mineral matter 25 percent air and 25 percent water so the proportion of these components so each of these components these four components we've looked at uh, the proportion of this component depends on the type of soil depends on the type of soil the way way in which the soil is managed and the local climate of the area and size of the mineral particles uh, affect each of these components so there are different types of soil and each of these different type of soil have different uh, content uh, mineral composition and organic matter composition so 
and all this depend on the climate so climates that have high amount of precipitation you have to, you need to know that the soil need to be will be saturated uh, because it will have high amount of water content within the pore spaces so vice versa so particle size of soil so based on the particle size we have um, sandy soil silt and clay soil now in the case of sand particles, measures between 2 millimeters to 0 0.06 millimeters. And sand is the largest type of soil particles. Sand is the largest type of soil particles. So you can see it here. So these are the sand particles within the range of uh, 0 0.06 or 0 0.05 to 2 millimeters. And in between each of these particles, you can see here, this form the pore spaces for either water or um, air and that is why you find out that sandy soil have good drainage because there are large pore spaces for water to uh, flow through it then we have silt silt soil uh, and particles measures between uh, 0 0.06 or 0 0.05 to 0 0.002 millimeters and silt particles are larger than clay particles but smaller than sand particles so you can see it here also then we now have clay particles which are particles measures less than so it's less than 0 0.002 millimeters clay is the smallest type of soil particles it feels sticky when it is wet so and uh, soil for plant growth soil for plant growth soil is the cheapest and most abundant medium in which water mineral nutrients anchorage and um, oxygen can be supplied to the plant so is the cheapest and most abundant medium in which water mineral nutrients anchorage and oxygen can be supplied to plant now plants require a supply of nitrogen phosphorus, potassium, and a range of other elements to construct protein and carry out life processes. So, um, soil as a medium for plant growth, we'll now look at how each of these components of soil enable and, uh, and for effective plant growth. So first, let's look at the mineral component, so mineral ions. Um, poor plant growth may be due to deficiency in one or more minerals. So we are looking at the first one, mineral ions. So minerals, uh, ions include nitrate, and it supplies the element called nitrogen. And nitrogen is used for protein, to make protein, which are needed for cell growth uh, and division. So uh, extra higher tier information. So nitrogen is needed to make amino acid, which is used to make proteins. So another mineral we we'll look at is phosphate. Phosphate produce supply the element uh, called phosphorus, and is used for respiration and growth. So phosphorus is needed also to make DNA and cell membrane. Then we have potassium um, compounds which produce the element potassium, and why is it needed? It's needed for respiration and photosynthesis. So potassium is needed in enzymes involved in respiration and also photosynthesis. While magnesium um, compound element supplied is magnesium and is used for photosynthesis. So magnesium is needed to make chlorophyll and chlorophyll, you remember, help to trap sunlight for photosynthesis. So next, we'll look at number two. We'll look at um, organic content of the soil. Organic content how it helps in plant growth now um, organic content has to do with decomposers that produce humus decomposers that produce humus that's rich in soil and uh, rich in nutrient uh, include etworm etworm help to break down vegetation mix the soil aerate the soil spread organic matter through the soil then fungi feed directly on dead matter digest hard woody items and plants to take up nutrients through their roots and we have bacteria work on organic matter also and it convert waste products to simple chemicals some convert nitrogen to nitrates uh, which is important in the nitrogen cycle now these are uh, decomposers that help to enrich uh, the organic matter in soil so 
higher level of organic matter, what is the importance now of organic matter in soil? First, it increases the water holding capacity. So it acts like a sponge. So it absorbs more water. So soil that are rich in organic content uh, absorb more, more water. So it, it increases the water holding capacity. and uh, It increases air spaces in the soil. So there will be more oxygen. It increases the numbers of decomposers and tunnels and barrows in the soil, providing additional drainage and less compaction. It prevents loss of mineral nutrients such as humus holds on uh, onto mineral nutrients. So, and thirdly, we look at pH. How does soil pH help in plant growth? Now, depend on the type of parent rock and pH of water that flow within the area. Remember, pH is uh, the acidity or alkalinity of a, a solution. So it depends on the type of rock, however, and um, the pH of water that flow into the area. It affects the uptake of nutrients by plant root. It affects the availability of nutrients also. Farmers can try changing the pH of a soil, either to acidify it using fertilizers that have an acidic effect or make it alkaline adding uh, ground limestone will help in that process so uh, farmers can alter the ph content to suit uh, the plant now another factor that affect plant growth is drainage now capacity of the soil to drain water uh, must be medium so there will be no water loss and no surplus amount of water to suit plant growth and lastly, ease of cultivation. How easy, how easily the soil can be plowed or cultivated. So if you're looking at soil as a medium of plant growth, you look at the mineral ions, you look at the organic content, you look at the soil pH, the drainage, and the ease of cultivation. Those are the four or five things you look at when you want to look at soil as a medium for plant growth. Now, what is the differences between a sandy and clay soil. Now, looking at each of these contents we just looked at, we use it to differentiate. So, based on air content, uh, sandy soil have larger particles, remember, so it has higher air content and clay soil have low air content. In case of water content, uh, sandy soil have low water content because the water can easily drain through the large air spaces, while clay soil have the capability to hold high amount of water. Drainage. Uh, sandy soil drain quickly while clay soil drains slowly. Ease of cultivation. Sandy soil is easy to cultivate. Clay soil is quite difficult to cultivate. And in terms of humus, sandy soil is rich in humus, organic contents then, that's the humus, while clay soil is quite low in humus. Now, in the part two of um, this agriculture and this environment, it's quite a very, very large topic. So I broke it down into four um, parts. So in part two, we'll be looking at, um, um, what is it called? Agricultural types, increasing agricultural yield and impact of agriculture. So that's what we'll look at in part two. So subscribe. Um, so once I upload part two, you'll be able to get it. Thank you.